Do you know the evidence for the use of supplements in the setting of Parkinson's disease? This is our topic today. My name is Dr. Sayas. I am an internist, neurologist, fellowship trained in movement disorders. If you take supplements, you are not alone. Actually, this is very common. Up to 52% of the US population take supplements. And 31% of those to take supplements are taking multivitamins, including myself. I take a multivitamins almost every day. And I say every day because sometimes I forget to take it. Now, if we talk about patients with Parkinson's disease, we have this article uh, published in 2001, which show that patients with Parkinson's disease 40% of them are taking complementary or alternative medicine. And 58% 58 of those 40% are actually taking vitamins or herbs. And if you see even uh, South, uh, South Korea is even taking a more 76% of the patients. Now let's talk about the evidence for the use of supplement in the setting of Parkinson's disease. Uh, and I'm talking about the evidence to improve or to prevent or delay symptoms related with Parkinson's disease. We cannot talk about all of them because there are many. I'm just going to talk about the one that I see the most in the clinic, in the medication list of, of my patients. So we have this slide here. Uh, on the left corner of your screen, you see coenzyme Q10, creatine and vitamin E. These are the ones that are not useful based on is clear evidence, based on high quality studies. So for example, coenzyme Q10. In phase two trials, actually it shows some potential benefits. Uh, and I say potential benefits because when you test this supplement in a large uh, trial, phase three trials, with over 600 patients uh, over 16 months, no benefits at either 1,200,000 milligrams or 2,400 milligrams per day. So it didn't help. The same applied to creatine, creatine, which shows some questionable benefits early trials, but no benefit when you do large uh, phase three trials. Regarding vitamin E, if you do, if you don't have vitamin E deficiency, which is easily to, to test uh, with a, a blood test, you don't need to take extra amount of vitamin E. Uh, actually, excessive amount of vitamin E might increase mortality. So the chances of you dying. Uh, at least uh, based on the cardiovascular literature. Uh, actually, vitamin E, sometimes surgery surgeons rec recommend to stop taking supplements two weeks prior to the, to the surgery to prevent bleeding, okay? So excessive amount of vitamin E uh, predispose you to have bleeding, especially if you are taking antiplatelets or anticoagulants. Now, um, acquired vitamin E is very rare, except if you have chronic liver disease or some type of pancreatic insufficiency or any other condition that affect your the fat fat absorption. In those cases, you need to check your levels and 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 take the appropriate uh, replacement. Now. Those so these supplements that you see here on the right corner, these are uh, more difficult. Why? Because the evidence is mixed or limited in the in the setting of Parkinson's disease. It might it might not help. Uh, in other words, we don't have enough evidence, good evidence, randomized controlled trials, uh, good randomized control trial to recommend in the setting of Parkinson's disease. I'm talking about the macuna prurient and the medical marijuana or the cannabidiol. However, 
I have seen uh, there are actually uh, weak data, uh, mostly uh, subjective and data, uh, observ observational study showing that cannabidiols, CBD, specifically CBD, might help in three things in the setting of Parkinson. Anxiety, okay, sleeping issues, and pain. But again, this is a uh, uh, weak evidence based on subjective uh, studies. I will post a video during the next months about marijuana in the setting of Parkinson's disease. Uh, I will be talking. Uh, I will be talking about the the effect in our brain and also the effect in our cardiovascular system. If you want to know more about macuna uh, or velvet beans uh, in the setting of Parkinson's disease, watch the video that I have uh, about this uh, product. The link will be in the description below of this video. If there is something that I trust in my field is the American Academy of Neurology and the Movement Disorder Society. This article, this is actually an evidence-based review published in 2018 by the Movement Disorder Society. They do not recommend, if you see here, they do not recommend coenzyme Q10 and creatine. You see here, not useful, okay? Not useful. So they do not recommend to treat motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease based, based on current evidence. And this is again, 2018. At least it's safe, okay? Now, however, this is my opinion. If you think it's helping you, keep using it. Keep using it. At least it's, it's safe and, and, and people tolerate uh, this supplement pretty well. The only thing I will tell you is the creatine increase um, water accumulation. So patients tend to gain weight uh, with creatine. But otherwise, it's pretty safe. These are the vitamins. These four vitamins are the ones I will recommend to check at least annually every year in the setting of Parkinson's disease. There are some evidence indicating that levodopa might cause deficiency in these vitamins. I personally see uh, low normal levels, uh, uh, especially vitamin B12. And when you have vitamin B12 deficiency and you don't treat that, you will end up what, uh, with neuropathy, polyneuropathy, which is a peripheral nerve problem causing you to have pain, especially in, in your feet, numbness, tingling sensation, and more balance issues. You do not want to miss that. So, so uh, I always recommend to check vitamin B12 at least uh, once a year. Now, vitamin B6 might cause you to have the same if it's low or high. So you have to be careful. So when you take vitamin B6, you need to check your levels because if you take too much, you might end up having also neuropathy, polyneuropathy, okay? Now, low folic acid might cause memory issues, anemia, and fatigue um, as vitamin B12 deficiency and similar. Vitamin D is very, vitamin D deficiency is very common. So you need to have a good levels of vitamin D to have a good bone health. This is very important because remember, patients with Parkinson. They tend to have balance issues and they might fall. So you better have a good bone health to protect your bones, right? From, from a fall, from a trauma. Now, toxic levels of vitamin D, so high, very, very high levels of, of vitamin D might cause you to have absorption, more absorption of calcium, which is not good for your system. Now, let me summarize. I will summarize in four points. Point number one, check vitamin B12, folic acid, vitamin D, and vitamin, vitamin B6 levels at least once a year in the setting of Parkinson's disease, okay? I tend to recommend to take uh, one tablet multivitamin. There are many types and daily, especially if you are not eating well or you, you are suspecting that 
your loved one are is not eating well. So one multivitamin, I think is good. Number three, follow mind diet. I have a video of the mind diet. If you follow the mind diet, it's very unlikely that you will need supplements. Okay, you will be covering almost everything. If you don't like the mind diet, the second choice, in my opinion, is to follow Mediterranean diet, which is similar to the mind diet. Number four, and the last one, be careful with Dr. Google, okay? And how you get information in the internet. This is very important. You have to be careful. Follow your doctor recommendations always. Follow your doctor recommendations. They are usually trained to interpret the data, okay? If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.